Hello, I'm Wayne Visser, I'm Director of CSR International, and I'm here today with uh, Marion van Opeinen, uh, who is the Senior Consultant for CREM, which is a sustainability consultancy. And we're here today at the meeting of the EU High Level Group on CSR. Uh, welcome, Marion. Uh, Thank you. You're doing some work for the EU. Could you start by telling us a bit about that? We are mainly involved in two tasks, it's a complete project of five tasks and we are working on one task which is related to sustainability reporting in Europe and then mainly the state of play of sustainability reporting in Europe from as well the readers as the um, writers or the company's perspective. And there we are looking at how it aligns together what the company actually intends to um, to read with their um, report and what the reader actually wants to get from it. And um, we put that in the total social context where you have as well the uh, legislation on reporting which is very limited to the number of countries yet, but also that governments are putting up stimulus to encourage companies to write a sustainability report. And obviously there's these different voluntary schemes which could be used. So we're trying to put that in a whole context and use that to define the state of play of sustainability reporting in Europe. And then there is the other task where we're working on um, the sustainable supply chain and where we mainly put the sustainable supply chain in relation to the UN framework which has been um, identified by um, Professor Ruggi and it's a framework where he identifies the responsibilities of companies in relation to the duty of the state to protect its population, the responsibilities of companies to respect human rights and also the ways of how remedies can be put in place so that um, uh, communities affected by companies can find a way to address the issues that they're facing. And that's the main two tasks where we are working on in um, the EU project at the moment. And the results should be available by the end of this year. Okay. Uh, can you then talk a little bit more broadly about some of the trends that you see in your supply chain work and more broadly in sustainability? If we look at sustainability, I think there's a few trends which will get on the agenda and one of those trends which we see is for example water, the water use of companies and how that affects um, communities in especially producing countries. Because where you see like the global carbon footprint, it's a global um, impact, but where you see the water footprints, you see that it's a more local impact, whereas the industry operates globally. And for example, if you take a t-shirt, there's 2,700 litres of water needed to produce a t-shirt, which we wear every day, and that's, it has a highly impact on the uh, communities. And also, if you, for example, look at um, leather, you would use much more because the production process is even more intense. And um, there we're talking about like 16,000 litres of water. Um, the same for a hamburger, which takes 2,400 litres, which mainly goes into the food production of the um, kettle um, for the hamburger. And that also brings another issue um, in the light as well, where um, the insecurity of food um, globally is probably also going to be a next CSR issue which gets high onto the agenda. We see like um, unequal division of the use of um, food commodities for the production of meat, um, which could be used directly as well. Yeah, now uh, I happen to be in Indonesia when one of the supply chain issues hit around palm oil. Uh, is this one of the issues you look at as well, sustainable palm oil? I'm currently working on a project where um, we are trying to involve different smallholder groups in the RSPO, the Round Table Sustainable round table and sustainable palm oil and where we are um, working together with those groups to um, get them up to a level that they can certify themselves according to the RSPO um, guidelines and um, it's, it's a very complex um, setting because the um, it's, a, it's a huge commodity and um, what we see is that the although these smallholders are 
a large part of the production, 30 to 40 percent of the palm oil is being produced by smallholders in Indonesia. Um, but it's very difficult to get them involved um, as it's a complex um, thing to get them up to a level because they only have two hectares um, where they're producing and um, there's a lot of illiteracy, there's um, uneducated um, um, which is then difficult to have them work up to the, those um, certifications process. Mm. And therefore we have involved a, a party, partner in Indonesia and in Kuala Lumpur and in this consortium we are working with two groups on Sumatra and one is related to one large multinational and another one is an independent group and especially for the independent group to become part of the global um, global market on sustainable palm oil is a, a challenge but also it's a huge chance for them to um, to make access to the international market as well. When we were talking earlier about supply chain you talked about post-consumer supply chain can you explain what you mean by that? Another thing, and that's what we are also going to touch in the EU project, is that we not only look at um, back into the supply chain, so mainly the production, but another example more forward into, into the uh, supply chain is, for example, the e-waste. And although that's uh, regulated um, by European countries, it still happens that a lot of our e-waste reaches, for example, Africa or in particular Ghana, um, which is disposed there and it's supposed to be used for as second-hand um, computers or mobile phones or whatever. But as the um, particles used in production are uh, of high value on the market, they also get disposed, get burned with all the issues of the chemicals coming free when burning the e-waste, um, health problems there and a very low uh, income for the people uh, burning and selling them. So that's an issue which we will touch within the um, EU project as well. Well, thank you very much for your time today. I look forward to the uh, results of the EU study. Thank you. Your pleasure.